Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. Notwithstanding the extremely depressing and ridiculous loss I suffered at the end of the last video, I am very excited to play more games with this deck. This is, I think, one of the funnest Arena decks I have piloted in quite a while. The draft was strong. There's no real bad cards in it. Eh, you know, maybe the Voodoo Doctor, I suppose. But lots of good cards, good epics, rares. I am really excited to keep on trucking. Hopefully this doesn't end at three wins or I'm gonna whine, whine, whine. Hey, Argent Squire, nice of you to show up. Bitch. Let's keep that opening hand. Oh, Light's Justice on turn one? Praise be Jesus. Didn't think that would ever happen. I, I had two games where it screwed me up having it show up right as I drew for turn two. So, a very optimistic beginning here. We have the Squire on turn one, which should survive. And then we can play Lights, Justice, and Google Warrior, both on turn two with the help of the coin. It's looking good. Oh, yes it is. I may not even play Lights, Justice with the coin. Maybe the Google Warrior will get the job done. It just kind of depends on the sitch. Sitch is what uh, hip teenagers nowadays say instead of situation, although I'm pretty sure that's been around for a while. Moving on, Power of the Wild. Okay, so yeah, the Bluegill Warrior will just kill this. I don't think I need a Light's Justice up. I could, instead of the Bluegill Warrior, play Light's Justice and pop the shield. Uh, but no, we'll just go ahead and keep it simple, keep it safe, as the old saying goes. So Bluegill Warrior, I mentioned during the draft, it's a, it's a useful card for Paladins, because Paladins otherwise don't have any early removal. And that just kind of shows you what I'm talking about. It was very handy. Okay, the Imp Master is actually quite irritating here. I could play the Light's Justice. That will take care of these Imps. I could also play the Cobra, which would take care of the Imp Master as well. Or I could play them both. Why the hell not, right? Yeah, let's just do this. This is a good time for the coin, I think. So we'll keep the Divine Shield on my Squire. Use the weapon to ping off all the Imps. Get some more damage on the face. And then uh, now the Cobra's threatening to kill this Imp Master. And live to tell about it. Anytime the Cobra kills something and doesn't die, that's just the most annoying thing. So, presumably if this druid can put a stop to my shenanigans, he will. Cobra here is also a good guard against Druid of the Claw. That might have come up soon. He'll either have to kill the Cobra or play the Druid and let the Cobra kill it. The best thing he can do is kill the Cobra right now with a Wrath or maybe even a Swipe or a Claw. So lots of different things would kill the Cobra. We must cleanse Shattered Sun Cleric? Well, that doesn't quite kill the Cobra, but it comes close. Certainly comes close. Ah, uh, Annoying. Well, hmm, I think I'm still gonna kill the Ip Master here, even though it means that the Cobra will die to a shapeshift, because... Um... Oh, wait, I can't kill everything. Oh, whoops, that was silly of me. Well, the per the, the guy's going to get to kill my Cobra and play a Druid of the Claw, which is kind of irritating, but that's fine. So we'll guess we'll go ahead and uh, play the Yeti here. For justice. Kill off the Imp. Swing again. And, okay, that Saturn and Cleric actually was pretty good. Because it buffed the Cobra, dropped the Cobra down, to one, Cobra down to one health. He chooses to Shapeshift, which is good for me. That means no Druid of the Claw. Paladins do not have a particularly easy time of dealing with those four sixes with taunt. Alarmabot! Ah, oh, I hold you in contempt, good sir. Now, usually I let Alarmabots live, but, you know, here, I don't really see the reason to let it live. If I can just kill everything anyway. So let's play the Azure Drake. Kill that thing. Kill the bot. So the bot was basically a three mana heal four. Because I killed it instead of killing his card, which is awful. Healing touch is like a, what, three mana heal eight? And it's still a borderline unplayable card. So this is good. Alright, now uh, this weapon is going to do me one last bit of justice. I will get to kill the Lord of the Arena with the creature plus the weapon. I could also silence it. Very intriguing possibility. Hit him for 8. But I don't see the reason to go balls for broke here. So spell damage is not useful at the moment. Let's just assume it's never going to be useful. Kill the Lord of the Arena. I am going down a lot in health, but you know, I'm up against a druid. The druids are not exactly great at burning people out. If I were up against a hunter maybe, or a mage, I would probably not cavalierly go down to 19 like this. But this seems all right. Hopefully there's no more big creatures dropping down here. If there is a big taunter, like an Ancient of War or something, I'll just silence it. And then I'll start going for the face. Sludge Belcher, that is a fantastic silence target. 
I could, of course, kill it and Kodo the slime off, but yeah, this is, I think this is the time to drop Mr. Silence. So we'll silence that, we'll ignore this thing, and we're just going to hit him in the face. I will play Loot Hoarder because I'd like the card. I'm getting a little bit low on cards, so the Loot Hoarder has value to me beyond the reinforcement. I actually haven't even used my hero ability all this game, but that's fine. If he plays Ironbark Protector, Blessing of Kings will knock it out. So I'm not even concerned about that. And anytime you're up against a Druid and you're not concerned about Ironbark Protector, you know you're in pretty good shape. Okay, he actually did play one. That's totally fine. I should win now. So first... Blessing of Kings. Let's do the Spellbreaker. Kill the Iron Bark. Swing, 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 and actually Hammer of Wrath. One of the great things about the card is it can target the face and sometimes three damage for four mana is all you need. Hammer of Wrath gives you removal and card draw, the potential for card advantage, and burn all in one card. It's an incredibly, incredibly good card. Well, that was a pretty easy game. You know, the thing is that Druid had things to play all game. He had a Panther, then an Imp Master, then a Shattered Sun Cleric, then a Sludge Belcher, which is a 5-mana card, Lord of the Arena, 6-mana card. He was on curve the whole game. I just crushed him because I had good answers. I guess he never played any removal. He never played any Swipe, Wrath, Starfall, Claw. But then again, I didn't even really play that much removal either. I didn't play any True Slippers, and the Hammer of Wrath was just to kill him. I could have killed him anyway. This is all I'm going to get mulligan. The Cleric, I might have capped in another life, but really, I've got so many one-drops here, there's no reason why I shouldn't get some, and I do. So I will play Leopard Gnome on turn one, because what this does is it means that if the opponent coins to kill it, she loses her coin, and she also forfeits, you know, playing like a 3-2 or something that she could have done, which would have been much more annoying to me than uh, losing this Leopard Gnome. Is she going to do it? Yes, she is. All right, that's fine. Again, I'm willing to sacrifice this card to stop her from playing other things. And the fact that she loses the coin is a bonus. What I'm more concerned about is the fact that my deck, despite its incredibly low curve, cannot come up with anything to play even next turn. Now I actually regret mulliganing that Shattered Sun Cleric. She has a Raptor, so my Recruit lives for now. Oh, Infiltrator. Well, better than nothing, I guess. But I really wish it had come on turn one. Because then I could have killed this raptor and she would have been able to kill it with the fire blast. My timing is a little bit off in some of these games. Still though, not a bad opening. Not a bad opening at all. If she pings the recruit, she's spending her entire turn doing that. If she plays something else, my recruit will kill the raptor off. She decides to ping the recruit, which is fine. By me. Shadow and Cleric doesn't do me any good here. We'll just play the Yeti and trade. So this looks really good. She also has a Yeti. <laughs> okay, well now actually I am going to play a Shattered Sun Cleric. Because that is quite convenient. Not only do I kill her Yeti, but my thing has two health, so it doesn't die to the Fire Blast. So just like that, I'm back in it, and you can see how, you know, turn one Leper Gnome was good, even though it was card disadvantage. If I hadn't done that, she might have coined into, for example, uh, the Raptor, and I wouldn't have had a way to kill it. It would have been there on turn two. Alright, so I could play Avenging Wrath here just to basically answer this situation, or sitch, as they say. Oh god, I'm just being terrible here. The Squire's good kills either of my creatures, so I'm actually kind of tempted to do this. I could play the Sludge Belcher and just ignore her stuff and attack, but then if she polymorphs it, that's pretty silly. Let's go ahead and Avenging Wrath, this is a good time for it. So I'm hoping the, the missiles go at the creatures. Alright, the Squire lived, but hey, look at this recruit. MVP right there, and we get to hit her for 8. So, the mage is not in great shape here. She's got 7 cards to my 6, soon to be 7. I've got more card advantage, taunt, and then the guardian. These guys conveniently also survive flame strike, which is her main source of, uh, main possibility for getting back in the game. She's on the back foot here. Not that this game is over by any means, but she's on the back foot for sure. She heals up. Not that impressive, because I can just kill this thing right now. She plays this. Is she going to play Arcane Missiles or a Frost Bolt? Ah, uh, she didn't have either one of those. Alright, let's think here. What I'm going to do is... Uh, see, if I do the Ghoul, then I'm kind of vulnerable to Flame Strike. If I do this, I cannot Hammer of Wrath. Aha. 
So here's the move. I'm gonna play the Belcher. Blue Girl Warrior. Kill the Apprentice. Kill the Farseer. But this Yeti, I am gonna hit for 5 damage, because 5 damage is pretty good. So now I've got the Hammer of Wrath. She's at 11 health. Card wise, I'm still equal to her. And Flame Strike's no good at all. Polymorph for this would be most of her mana. She has the Polymorph, it looks like. No, she has an Owl. Ah, I see. Is she gonna fireball this thing now? She is. Well, the problem with this plan for her is that the Yeti still gets to keep on swinging. And I got Light's Justice, which is a really good top deck. I get to kill this Owl. Swing at the face. And then make a recruit. So, Flame Strike here is good. It would clear my board. I've got 3 plus 3 is 6 damage. I need 3 more damage to her. And I can drop this Guardian, but if she has a Fireball or a Polymorph for the Guardian, after a Flame Strike here, she could actually win because she'd be ahead on cards. If I didn't get uh, my True Silver Champion in time to finish her off, or if she um, got Taunt in the way to stop me from getting damage to, done to her face. Of course, the fact that this deals damage and gives me a card could help me stay in the game, even in the event of a Flame Strike. No, no Flame Strike! Argent Commander seems to be a popular thing. Playing a commander when something else is needed. She now kills off the ghoul. But this means she loses. So we swing. Swing. And Hammer of Wrath again goes for the face for the win. Good job, Hammer of Wrath. Good job. God, this deck is so fun! Can't stop gushing about how fun it is. Oh, it's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. Wouldn't be surprised if this one made it to 12. I also wouldn't be surprised if this one ended up losing somewhere because I messed up or because it's not as good as I think it is. But, oh, it's so good. Especially after playing that garbage rogue deck before this. Just playing an actual deck here is just an absolute delight. All right, well, I guess I should comment here what I think about Nexramus. The answer is, I like it. I think that the whole stuff with the wings and the bosses and stuff, I didn't actually like very much in the end. But the new cards, I think, were very well designed, and I think they add a lot to the game without over overwhelming the game. Like Sludge Belcher, I think, is just a great addition to Hearthstone. I think that the Nerubian Egg is super fun. The class cards? I don't know how I feel about the class cards. It's funny that uh, one of the class cards I was least excited about actually seems to be the most significant one for the arena. That, of course, is the Paladin Secret Avenge. I did not think that card was going to be a big deal, but it actually really is. The other class cards don't seem to matter very much. Poison Eggs is pretty much trash. The Ambusher I've tried it as the rogue. It's junk. Um... The so that's the rogue one. The duplicate secret I think is okay, but it's not that great most of the time. Um, I think that what's his face? What are the other ones? The oh the the web spinner is good. The web spinner for hunters. That one's really good. I think I like that one a lot. What else is there? Um. So we get the paladin one. The major. The, oh the warrior one. I actually really haven't seen the warrior one very much yet. I actually should have attacked first. I could have gotten an extra point of damage through. So the, the Death Bite, I haven't seen that one up here yet. So that, that one is one I'm kind of waiting on. And the Dark Cultist, my girlfriend played with it in rank. Didn't really seem to be that great. I mean, a 3-4 for, um, for 3 seems super exciting, but it didn't really seem to matter that much. Now my opponent's going to get tons of cards off this Acolyte and kill off my Urgent Squire. I'm actually kind of behind on this game. The start was not a good one. Her getting Mirror Entity off of the... Mad Scientist was really unfortunate as far as developments go. Well, I'll play the Yeti. It's better than her current board anyway. We'll see if we can catch back up, but I'm definitely on the back foot now. Pyromancer, Coin, Hammer. Next turn would deal two damage to everything. The problem is it would give her two cards off this goddamn Acolyte. Which is a real nuisance. Ah, uh, okay. Well, guess we'll uh, do this. And this pair of three twos here. Try to get some board presence going. The card situation is pretty bad. She has eight cards to my five. Yuck. But it's because this acolyte has been so amazing. If she pings it, she'll get the full three cards out of it, which would be unfortunate. My 
I've got no damage dealt to her. Oh, God. Well, that sucks. At least the Acolyte still dies upon hitting my creatures. It's a good thing I buffed my Loot Hoarder with this Cleric, but the bear gets to kill something and live to tell about it. The correct place to kill the Shattered Sun Cleric so that I don't get the card. There's no reason to give me the card. But I guess she's killing both, so she figured it didn't matter. Reasonable enough. All right. Well, now we'll clear her board. Unfortunately, ha, not quite, I guess. Yuck. Uh, Stampeding Kodo? Uh, doesn't really... I mean, it kills the defender, but then the bear survives, which I'm not a fan of. All right. Let's do what we need to do. Hopefully the card I get is a good one. And it's not really. Leopard Gnome and move on. So the smoke is cleared. She has six cards to my three, soon to be four, assuming she pings the Leopard Gnome. If she doesn't ping the Leopard Gnome, that means it's really bad. That means she used all seven of her mana. It's almost worse than just letting this Leopard Gnome die. Well, this game just never got off to a good start. She had the answers and I didn't. And that'll just happen sometimes. I'm behind on life cards and on the board. Hooray. Let's draw a card. Make a recruit. Heal up. Pass the turn. Just trying to get something to stick on this board. You know, I bet this will be the mage that finally has flame strike. That would just be my luck. Nope, no flame strike. Mad Bomber, please hit the tiger. Oh, yes. That was exactly what we needed here. The kind of luck. Missing both of my one toughness creatures and hitting her tiger twice. Definitely not what this opponent wanted. And then the Yeti. Okay. So we're, we're back in business, or at least partially back in business. Let's play the Sludge Belcher. Kill off that tiger. Upper gnome and a recruit. Still very far behind here. But if the Mad Bomber had killed my stuff, I would have be completely far behind to the point where it's yeah, unwinnable. Okay, so now two of her creatures died of Consecration. It's possible that I can really catch back up next turn. If she plays like a Gurubashi Berserker, Kodo will kill it, and then Consecration kills everything else. Or if she plays like the Death Lord. Ugh. Well... That, that cancels out my good luck from the poor, but still, she can play Gorobashi Berserker here. Come on! Ah, uh, not quite. So this will die to the Kodo, but it's not that great of a victory. And my Spellbreaker right now is actually not super helpful. So do you Consecrate here? I mean, I think you have to. The problem is, I'm just down cards. Here's where Lay on Hands would actually be more helpful than Avenging Wrath. She has five to my two, and it's because of the early game didn't go my way. Crap. Well, that kind of sucked, but still, I think that uh, this was just sort of bad luck. Ooh, I haven't seen this one played before. I still think we can go far. Damn Mirror Entity. Man, pretty much any other secret besides Mirror Entity would have been better for me. She got a good one. Granted, that's probably the only one that she had in her deck, so I guess I shouldn't really be that shocked. Alright, well, let's silence the Acolyte, because she really can't get any more cards. I just can't let that happen. Put Blessing of Kings on this and think, do I go for the face? Let her deal with this thing? Let's go for the face. When you're behind... Take. Wait, no, hang on. Maybe I should kill this Wailing Soul so that the Spellbreaker cannot automatically die. Yes, that's right. Let's go for Board Presence. We'll do that. She has Flame Strike, she wins. She has Fireball, she wins. But, you know, maybe she just has nothing but junk. Who knows? Right. Flame strike. Well played. I think we're gonna draw a card and concede. She just ended up with three more cards compared to me, and that was the problem. Emperor Cobra. Oh, fine. We'll keep playing. She should have to lose one of her minions, probably the Berserker for the Cobra. And then maybe I'll get like Guardian of Kings or something and catch back up. There's the Enrage, there's the Cobra dead. Oh, Zero Drake, that's not good. So she gets up another card and puts a 4-4 body down. That's just terrible. Oh, how terrible. 
Choice of a champion. Are we gonna keep on playing? Why am I still playing this game? There's just no hope. But okay, we'll we'll keep on playing. So kill that Drake. She's got seven damage here. I'm down to 13 health. I got another three after I hit this, so I'll be down to 10 health. Can't burn her out, she's got too much health. Her hero ability cancels mine, and she has two extra cards beyond what she's already killing with on the board. Man, a Consecration? I think I have one more Consecration. Yup, there it is! Yeah! So we'll kill that stuff, True Silver Champion. I mean, I don't know, if she's holding on to like two alarm bots or something and I get a Guardian of Kings. Being behind two cards is so brutal. It was really that Acolyte that she got that worked so well with my Argent Squire after she stole my bear. Maybe I shouldn't have let her take the bear? Could I have avoided that? I don't know. All right, so this doesn't hit very hard, which is good. And that doesn't hit very hard either, so that's also good. Guardian of Kings. Ooh, bad draft, Boris, bad draft. I forget what I could have taken. I think I could have taken some other like minion or something. Bad draft. This game is quickly going to the dogs. I don't think I can actually come back and win it, but who knows, there's a Guardian of Kings in here somewhere. You never know. All right, so how do we do this? I don't want to run it into either of these creatures, so we'll just uh, go for the base. Jink. No more Consecrations here. There is, I think, an Avenging Wrath, though. That could clear things up a bit. She just has to pop her spiders, play a Frostful Forelord, well played. And then I'm dead next turn. Flash eating gold. Well, that'll do. That'll do. You know what? Even if I lose this next game, I'm not going to whine too much. It was a really fun deck. I don't think I could have beaten either the, who was it, Hunter who beat me or this mage. Well, maybe the mage, maybe I could have played around that secret. But the other games are just absolutely crushing, and I'm willing to accept that I just lost to bad luck if I only end up making it to five wins. Still though, I think I'm way better than the average five and two deck. So while you can always lose, no matter how much better you are, if you get bad enough luck, the odds I think are with me. Spiffyrific, nice name, mage. Not a big fan of playing mages. They kill my turn one leper gnomes and all that sort of stuff, but I'm still gonna play it. It just would be better if I were up against a warrior or a hunter. All right, we actually got a couple of one drops. So the right move here is definitely the leper gnome because leper gnomes ability is useful right now or at any point in the game whereas the voodoo doctor i don't want to waste it if i don't have to waste it ah okay so she's did not coin out a kill for the leper gnome which is just fine by me she did i guess she could have killed this with using the coin so i guess she decided that the leper gnome was less valuable to her than the coin is interesting i'm not sure i really agree with that assessment but fair enough that's what she thinks, that's what she can do. Maybe she's got something she's saving the coin for. But that is what she did. She chose to lose the leper gnome instead of losing the coin. And the apprentice now makes me wish I'd played the voodoo doctor because I could have actually killed this thing. Oh no, I couldn't have. Arcane missiles would have killed it. So she actually pays arcane missiles to kill my recruit. She's going whole hog for the tempo here. A young priestess, wow. All right, well, good thing I got Consecration. Can't quite kill this stuff next turn, but I can kill it soon. What do you do here, the Cobra or the Bear? Let's go for the Bear, protect some health a little bit. Hopefully the Bear will be used to kill off the Apprentice. But she's given me card advantage, so there's a decent chance I can actually stabilize. Secret, huh? Well, it's either a duplicate or a mirror entity, most likely. The sorceress has been put beyond the range of uh, consecration. Let's flood the board here, I think. Check for mirror entity while we're at it. It's not mirror entity, so it's probably duplicate. Let's just put a bunch of stuff out here and try to wrest control of the board. I don't think this mage is playing right. 
I think she's given up cards too easily. Then again, I might end up losing if she gets enough burn on me and I don't get my healing in time. All right, so I cannot play the Bluegill Warrior and Consecrate here. Let's kill the Young Priestess in case it's Duplicate, because I'd rather her get Young Priestesses than Sorcerer's Apprentices. Okay, so it's not Young Priest, it's not Duplicate or Mirror Entity. Hmm. Well, let's check for Vaporize, etc. It's not that either. Oh my gosh, it's a spell one. Oh crap. So we know it's not Mirror Entity, Duplicate, Ice Armor, or Vaporize. It's either Counterspell, Spellbender, or Ice Block. That's bad, because if this thing gets counterspelled, which is the most likely one, because that's a rare, counterspells are rare, the other two are epics, I'm in trouble. And if she gets me down and up and has fireballs in her hand, that's also bad. Shoot! I might actually lose just by getting a slowly burned out. Is the fireball going on my face? No, it goes on the Cobra. I guess she's got a creature she wants to play that she wants to protect. Or maybe she's just protecting the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, she's not killing my Blue Glow Warrior with it. Oh, thank the merciful heavens. God, I love silence. We need to get rid of the stupid health buff. Finally kill this goddamn thing. And now I've got the board control. 15 health, especially having seen her use a fireball is pretty good. It's high enough. And I've got the, the justice guy and... Uh, and unearth and two silver champion for some healing back here. Okay, we need to play the sludge belcher to protect the health. Start putting out some damage. Hopefully this one does not have any flame strikes. Maybe I should have just sacrificed the spellbreaker into the ogre to get it down to three health so a sludge belcher could kill it. If she polymorphs or silences this though and hits me for six, I am probably dead. This would be a very ignominious way of losing the arena. I really feel like the hunter and the other mage who beat me, I had no chance. But this, I don't know. This doesn't seem like a particularly strong mage deck, nor was it piloted well in my opinion. So losing this game would be kind of sad. Alright, she decides to pop the sludge, kill a recruit, all's fair. Stampede encoder doesn't really work. Well, let's get a card. Alright, so if this is a spell bender, the Blessing of Might would get stolen, and she'd have a 4 3, which is pretty bad. If, so Spellbender would change the Blessing of Might, but not the count Consecration. Counterspell would get rid of either one. Hmm. Mm. Alright, let's just hope it's not Spellbender. It is. Fuck. Oh, it's Counterspell. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so that's good. So I, I lost the Blessing of Might, which is fine. I'd rather lose the Blessing of Might than a Consecration. Let's kill the Ogre, make a Recruit. Swing and swing. So after I consecrate, this thing will essentially be at 4 health, it'll be at 3 health after this. I'll be able to finish it off. It'll cost me a lot, but I'll be able to do it. And I just hope that whatever else she wants to play dies to consecration. That does not die to consecration. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose this game. Oh man, that's a huge creature. I need my Guardian of Kings, which I could not get in my last game. Can I get him in this game? No, I get a Leper No, Motherfucker. Honest to fucking god. Well, shit. So we'll play that, and is there any point to Consecrating? There isn't even really any point to Consecrating here, because I can't kill anything anyway. So uh, we'll just throw all of our minions out here and pass the turn. Now she's going to be for 7, I'm down to 8. I'm at that point that you might as well be dead versus a mage when you're at 8 health. Cannot get Guardian of Kings, save my life. And that, that's the story of this game, really. Raid leader, uh-oh. I'm down to 6 health. Oh jeez, and she has a giant thing. And she's going for the face. Yeah, this is over. This is entirely over. Still no Guardian of Kings, motherfucker. Well, let's consecrate, see what we can do. Uh, we need to kill this thing. I guess, like so. Kill. I need to kill the Frostwolf Warlord. Kill this thing. So... Hit her in the face. Oh, what an embarrassing run. This mage played badly, but my deck just didn't perform, or maybe I messed up somewhere. I don't even know. Now I'm down to three, down to two. Anything will kill me. I need Guardian of Kings to be my next top deck, or it's over, and that's if I don't lose right now, which I do. Ah! 
Bullshit, I say. Bullshit. I don't like how that arena went. Deck was so much better. And I know there's going to be people like, oh, Boris, don't you always say, you know, if you don't, don't complain about being unlucky. You should always look for ways to be better. That's true. That's true. I still think I was just horribly unlucky in that run. I think that deck was amazing. And I think that maybe that last game I could have won or something, but I think the other two were just crushingly frustrating losses. I think this could have been a lot better than five wins. I think that could have been a 12-win deck. I've certainly made it to 10 wins with decks that did not feel nearly as good as this one felt. So anyway, thanks for watching me try that out. I get a junk reward for five wins. And it's about time to start our next arena. Wait, no, we have a pack opening ceremony because we're up to 10. Woo! So the first pack is nothing. The second pack is a little better than average. Two rares instead of just one. The third pack is nothing. Fourth pack has an epic, but nothing else, and it's a crappy epic. So pretty junky so far. Not that it matters because my collection is full. I'm just saving up dust in case Blizzard ever makes a future expansion and you can actually craft the cards with dust. Do, 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 do. Normal pack. Nothing fancy here. The last time I had a pack opening, it was like a really good selection of 10 packs. There was like legendaries, epics out the butthole. So it's not surprising that this next... Well, it is all random anyway, but it's not surprising that this is a pretty mediocre pack. Oh, look, I got a golden sea giant. I actually would use that in the deck. That's really cool. Thanks, game. Golden cards are probably the best thing right now because... You know, they're fancy, and I would actually maybe use them. But there is nothing here. Oh, Golden Eviscerate. Sure. I guess I'd use that sometimes. Alright, we're done. Let's go ahead and start the next arena, shall we? So we have... I hate how this pops up over the over the OK button. It's really obnoxious. Priest, Rogue, or Warrior. Well, alright, this is an easy choice. I have only done one Warrior run. And that one went to just three piddling wins. So clearly we're going to take Warrior here. Hopefully see that new card, Death Spite. But not first. All right, so here it's either Sludge Belcher or the Frothing Berserker. You can go for the Berserker for aggressiveness or the Sludge Belcher for defensiveness. Mm, let's take the Frothing Berserker for aggressiveness. If, if I don't know what else is going on, I might as well go for this. I will take the removal card here, the Slam. And... Oh god, these are all good cards. So, Silence is great to have, but do you take it over a removal? Probably not. Let's take the Reaper. It adds Reach and removal to the deck. I'd, like, I'd rather have a Sludge Belcher than a Fen Creeper, but we'll take a Fen Creeper. That's what we have to choose from. Defender Vargas. Haven't played with you in a while. Good card. Best two drop in the game. Yes, please. Card draw or card draw? Well, we'll take the card draw in the form of the Engineer, because that's a sure thing. Alright, let's grab the Ogre. Ogres can win games. Yes! Death Spite! It's, oh, it's actually a common. I didn't really, didn't even realize it was a common card. Lovely. Well, I'll definitely take it then. All right, they're all commons. All the cl new class cards are commons. So, Commanding Shout, I've seen it be really great. I've seen it be pretty crappy. I think I'd rather have the Kodo. Here's an interesting choice. The Cult Master can be good for some cards, but we'll take the Heroic Strike for some early removal. Cleaver Whirlwind is definitely the choice. Let's grab the Cleave. All right, a lot of people just always want me to take Questing Adventurer. I'm gonna take Commanding Shout, though I'm just not a big fan of the Quester. Call it personal bias. So the South Sea Deccan is the same of the Bluegill Warrior, provided you're holding a weapon. I don't have that many weapons, though, so the Bluegill Warrior is, will, is what's gonna be my pick. All right, too many two drops? Is this too many two drops? Some of these are spells. Yeah, let's take a Blood Raider. All right, we'll have a Whirlwind here. Wolf Rider for some more removal slash reach. Definitely turning into kind of a removal reachy sort of deck. Finally, I'll take a card drawer since I've been passing on that. Finally, I'll take a weapon because I haven't gotten any of those. I'll take another Berserker. Good three drop. One of the best in the game. Here we'll grab Execute. Dancing Swords I'm not a big fan of. Execute, though, it's always nice to have one of those. And I will take Silence because that is useful. Second Slam. Yeah, we'll take one. It's good with, with when you have an Execute. Zombie Chow could be good for an aggressive start. It really could. Let's do it. 
Even though the wolf provides some buff and it's cute and all, we'll take the zombie chow. Mortal Strike I'm growing a bigger and bigger fan of because it's one of the warrior's few direct damage cards. Uh, another Weaponsmith? Sure. Here, I don't want another four drops, so I'll grab the Battle Rage, even though it's conditional. I have it with Whirlwind, so there's some combo there. And War Golem, I've got Ogre, Fan Creeper, Kodo. Yeah, I've got enough big stuff. We'll take another Zombie Chow to double my odds of having a fast start. Now, do I take a second Death's Bite? We've got two Weaponsmiths, a Death's Bite, and an Arcanite Reaper. That's a lot of weapons. Maybe that's too many weapons. Let's take a Golem instead to fill in this three drop in the curve. And nice, we'll take a Drake for some more card draw to top things off. All right, this deck looks good. That's what I thought about the first deck I played was the Warrior. That ended up being total crap on a donkey. We'll see. We'll see. So now uh, the only classes I've played once are Mage, Rogue, and Shaman. Given a choice, but who knows? I guess even though Rogue was recent, I'd probably do Rogue because that was the one I did the worst with. Then Shaman, then Mage. Mage was my 12 win run. It's nice that early on to get a 12 win run. I've made it to 12 with Mage, 10 with Hunter, 10 with Priest, and 9 with Paladin. Those are my four best results so far. So far in this series, my average is a cool 6, which is a little bit depressing. I hope to do better than that. I hope to improve upon my average before, which is over 6. But we're back down to 6. Alright, this is just a pretty abysmal beginning. No Fiery War Axes in this draft is kind of a pain. And nothing to play here is another pain, so yuck. Heroic Strike, I think this could have been a minion. Kind of regret that it's not now. So my opponent also has a slow start, it would seem. Alright, I'm gonna coin this out just to get something to play. Yes, there's a chance that I'm going to have nothing to do next turn, but between my top decks and the possibility of my opponent putting something for me to kill with Heroic Strike, I feel like it was a worthy risk to take. Hopefully he doesn't have his own Heroic Strike. Or Silence, for that matter. And this guy can actually grow a little bit. Golem. Hmm. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I could Heroic Strike, hit it... Then finished off with the Berserker. I could silence it, but then I can't kill it. So I think that is what we'll do. I'll Heroic Strike the first iteration. Frothingly Berserk the second iteration. And now my opponent has a 5-2 that he has to deal with. Which there are a variety of ways of dealing with it. Amani uh, Weaponsmith being the best. Armani? No, Armani is a brand of clothing. Amani, I think. No, not Amani. Arathi. There it is. Arathi Weaponsmith would be the best. Corcron Elite, second best. But it still gets the job done. Alright, fair enough. I will play here a Defender of Argus. Not the optimal use of Defender of Argus, to be certain, but I think I need to play it just to get something down on the table. My deck's draw has not been abysmal, but it also has not been great. Tiger, that's unfortunate, so it'll kill my zombie chow, rather tragically. We'll save the Weaponsmith as a surprise. Let's play the Fen Creeper for now, and put more damage on his face. So he's actually at 29 health, because the zombie chow is going to die soon, canceling out much of my efforts. Alright, about to be repped here by the Reaper of Arcanites. Interesting choices. Are you going to keep the tiger hidden? He decides to keep the tiger hidden. Very interesting indeed. I could cycle Commanding Shout to no avail. I think I'll save it. I think it might be better than that. We'll just attack him with my creature. Since I hold no other weapons, I'm not going to hit him in the face yet. Alright, Stormborn, what you gonna do? 
Titan Creeper must be very annoying for him to deal with because, of course, it has 6 health to the 5 attack of the weapon. Sometimes that last point of damage is the most annoying one. He's hesitating. I don't think he has a good answer. In an earlier video, I said that someone was hesitating and it looked like they had, a, they had a variety of good answers. They were choosing between them. Here, I think this is a hesitation of not having anything great. It's cruel to ask Master is a decent way of finishing that off. You're now going to kill the Defender of Argus? That would be the most sensible thing to kill because then the Tiger's at 3 health and it will not die to my weapon. Killing the Arathi weapons would be a big mistake here because it would leave me able to kill the Tiger with my weapon. Wow, he goes for it anyway. I disagree. I disagree. He kills my weapon with the Ooze! Are you goddamn kidding me? Jesus! Ball sack, Christ. The Demolisher is very annoying here because it, it's, it thwarts the cleave, which would otherwise have killed his shit very effectively. Oh my god, I really wish I had that weapon. Motherfucker. Oozing. <sighs> okay. So here what I'll do is the following. We're gonna slam the Demolisher. Death's Bite is tempting, but no, let's just cleave. Hang on, let me kill this. Then cleave, see what we hit. Demolisher survives, unfortunately. And I'm gonna armor up. Hopefully Demolisher will miss my guy. It doesn't. Well, that's fucking life for you. Man, if I had my weapon, I could have killed off this Demolisher. That would have been very nice. Fucking ooze. I was just thinking, like, oh, you know, I used to complain about how people would throw oozes, and then people pointed out, like, Boris, why do you complain about oozes? It's not like they're that uncommon. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I, there really shouldn't be an ooze here. And then there was a goddamn ooze! Uh... Well, luckily I saved all my silence. Because uh, Sunwalker's a pretty good thing to silence. It's death Spite. Kill off the... Oh, God. I guess the Demolisher, really. Armor up, pass the turn. So next turn, Death's Bite attacking the Sunwalker will kill it, because the Death Rattle from Death's Bite will f deal the fifth point of damage. That's pretty cool, I think. Of course, my opponent rather cleverly plays the Acolyte of Pain to get a card out of the Death's Bite, Death Bite's um, battle, uh, Death Rattle. Very clever indeed. I'm actually losing right now. Losing, losing, losing. Balls. Jesus, ball sack Christ. Wish I had my own acolyte. Alright, let's draw a card. Let's play the Berserker. Death Spite. Yes, he gets a card, but I get a really giant Berserker, so he needs to have an answer to this Berserker now. Or he could hit it with his Fiery War Axe, I suppose, but that would be taking a lot of damage. And I will inf- Oh, I can't execute the Fairy Dragon! Whoops, I totally forgot I could not execute that Fairy Dragon. Well, I guess we'll execute the Acolyte to stop him from getting more cards. Oh, that was silly. So you can clear my board with the Fairy Dragon hitting the Berserker and the weapon, the Fiery War Axe hitting the Azure Drake. And then he's got three cards to my two in the first, first play. He's gonna copy that thing first. Oh, fuck. God damn it. God damn it. You should have really hit this before. Oh, what are you doing? Oh my god. My opponent just stone cold did not kill my frothing berserker. Holy shit. Well, if there's anything that's going to save me, it's that. So let's commanding shout. Oh my lord. Wow. So we will, let's see. Can I kill him? 10 plus 4, 14. No, I can't kill him. So we will uh, hit this thing. Killing it. We will Mortal Strike this thing, killing it. Now I'm going to be really obnoxious. I'm actually going to play a Cult Master. So if he kills this thing, I get a card off the Cult Master. If he kills the Cult Master, this thing lives. So he has to have a cleave or some other removal for the Cult Master to avoid being blown out. But oh my god, I can't believe he just let this thing live. That was ridiculous. It's one of the most ridiculous mistakes ever. I mean, if anything would let me win the game, it's that. He's fishing for a Whirlwind or an Execute. Doesn't find it. Actually hits himself in the face for 13 damage. And gives me a card. Wowza. Wowza, wowza, wowza. Alright, well, we're gonna hit him in the face. Play the Kodo. Play the Berserker. 
I'm not going to play the zombie child because that would give him five health. Zombie child, of course, I get them in the mid game when they're not very good. But we're still threatening lethal here. He has to kill the cult master first to stop me from getting cards. And then he still has to kill the other minions just because. Okay, so shield block gives him a card and some life, but it's not enough life. Or is it? It is. If the Azure Drake kills us, I've got five damage here. He has six health. Slam will kill the Cult Master, but does not give him a card. This lets him kill off either the Kodo or the Berserker. He chooses to kill off the Kodo. I guess he fears that I can enrage the Berserker, but the Kodo is really the smarter thing, because I might not have a way of kill uh, enraging my Berserker. Man, his target selection is very poor. That is a fact. So do I hit him in the face here? I don't think that's right. I think we're just going to take the time here to do that, and this, and this. Play it slow. Time is on my side. I know I have an Arcanite Reaper back here, which will finish the job. I've also got a Wolf Rider for some surprise damage. This is a dead card, which kind of sucks, but I'll take it. He's a Knife Juggler. Does he have another minion? He does. It's a big one, too. Please miss my Kodo. It hits my Kodo. Oh, fuck. I needed to kill a Dark Iron Dwarf real bad. All right. Well, here, we're going to play the Blue Girl Warrior, and I will actually play the Zombie Chow, simply because... um. Right now, I need to actually hold on. My opponent, despite his terrible play, is still doing well enough to possibly win this game. Oh, I got him down to one health. One fucking health. But Arcanite Reaper, I've still got enough time. Uh, he's going to be at 13 health. No, Arcanite Reaper does not kill him any longer. Shit. I'm actually going to lose this. Am I really going to lose? I'm going to lose this game. This is ridiculous. After all the terrible plays by the opponent... I am actually going to lose this, and I armored up for attacking, which is embarrassing. Oh my god, this deck must suck. It must, because I was going to lose. My opponent left my Frothing Berserker Lab, gave me a huge advantage, and then still is going to win. So this must actually be a shitty deck, because I faced really bad play from the opponent and still lost. I attacked him with the, my Cult Master when he was at 5 health. Maybe, you know, I should have uh, hit his Twilight or his Azure Drake. But then Slam would have just killed one of my other minions. Mm, I don't know. Wow. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, I say. Yeah, then I guess the Berserker would have lived. I don't know. That was just sad. I have to win the next game. If I don't win the next game, I'm just going to be shocked that a deck I thought was as solid as this one would ever go 0-2. Especially against such a crappy opponent. Man! Today's a tough day for Papa Boris. Actually, I should have stopped the video. I lost track of time. I'm sorry, this is going to be an extra long video. I should have stopped. We're already at 47 minutes. But whatever. Let's keep on trucking. So, this is a garbage opening hand, because of course, with two zombie chows in the deck, the odds of getting one on turn one are zero! And we'll mulligan get... Oh, more junk. Okay, great. That's awesome. Warrior's one of the worst classes to have nothing to play on the first two turns. Luckily, I do top deck my way out of it somewhat with this raider. Please pass the turn, 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 pass the turn. I have a feeling there's going to be a death rattle minion coming down the pike hole. Oh, I do. I do. I'm hooked on a feeling. What could he possibly be pointing at me? He's got nothing. Paladins don't have anything to point at me. Oh, Divine Shield. All right, that's perfect. Much better than I could have possibly hoped for. Coin? No, stop. Don't do anything else, you ass. Humility. Oh, I see. Well played. So he's stopping me from being able to kill his squire. Well, what we're going to do then is play the Wolf Rider, get the Protector off the map, do this, and then I'm planning to play Defender of Argus next turn and finally kill this damn thing if, I, if, if, if it should come to that. Demolisher? Oh, man. All right. So worth it to play the Defender of Argus just to kill the Undertaker? I think so. I think board presence is just that valuable. I just hope the Demolisher does not hit my Raider. That's... ARE YOU GODDAMN KIDDING ME? JESUS! The one thing is the one thing that happened, because that's bad. I mean, I would have liked to keep that 2-2 uh, I had. 
Knocked if he can choose with a 2 2, which is a ballerina's dress. Lord. Alright. Well, let's just play minions. Hopefully, we can get something to stick. Kill off Mr. Bitey. This time, the barrel obediently hits my face, and I've got a Boulder Fist Ogre next turn. Might be I'll even play a Cult Master, but I doubt it. I'd be able to kill enough stuff to make it worthwhile. We'll see, though. Booty Bay. Wow, with that, I might actually play a Cult Master here. He enrages my Berserker and kills it? I don't know if that was the right move. I would have just killed the Defender of Argus. But, whatever. It's your show, man. Alright, so we'll play a Cult Master here. Run this in. Get a card. Cleave? Okay. Change of plans. We'll cleave. Keep the golem. And when the smoke is cleared, I've got an ogre to play, which is good. I've got five cards to his four, soon to be six to his four. I've got board advantage. Life's about the same, and I've got this weaponsmith as well in case I need removal. So this is looking actually really good all of a sudden. He got about as lucky as he could have hoped to get. And I'm still doing great. All right, let's cash out the golem. Get a card. Execute this bitch. Play an ogre. Then swim for four. The Ford power of the cult master suddenly seems very relevant. As the paladin just demonstrated a lack of ability to remove the cult master. Secret? What could it be? I, you know, with Avenge in the mix, I just don't even know anymore. He silences this. I would really like to get an Iron Beak Owl now so I can silence this ogre and have it be a... Uh, a 6-7 again. Alright. Um, let's play the Berserker. Check for Noble Sacrifice. Okay, it's not Redemption. It's not Repentance. It's not Noble Sacrifice. It, it's probably Avenge. Yeah. Oh no, it's Eye for an Eye. Hilarious. Okay. That was probably not what he wanted to have happen there. Well, this game, this game's over. Now he's just toast. Even if he had Pyromancer equality for a board clear, I'm still away in the lead. Okay, good. This is what I was expecting the games to go like. Frothing Berserker. All right, we'll play it. I guess we'll cash out my ogre now. Zombie Chow? Hmm. Mm, no, I don't think there's any need. Let's just do Heroic Strike with my weapon. Kill that thing, grow both of my Berserkers some more. And swing for ass tons of damage. Threatening lethal now, and there's not much you can do about it. The bear is not going to hold me up. Nor is the recruit. Nor is the panda. Alright. It's all good now. Yes, sir. So we kill the bear. The card. Leave the panda. Kill the panda. And swing for 13 damage. Good chunk. Alright, let's remember to stop the video here. Thanks for watching, folks. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you soon for some more Hearthstone. Take care.